some big news out of the NFL as Antonio Brown has somehow been released and signed in the same day. Well, due to NFL rules, I can't really show you Steelers highlights because the game is not over. I mean, come on, what fun is that? We have been in Texas, so you know that what that means, Peter, is we've been eating a That's lot. Right like almost too much. But we talked with some Penn State players before they made the trip to Dallas about what it would be like to play in this colossal venue. Some of their shots looked a little bit like that and it's pretty relatable to the casual golfers. Hall of Fame quarterbacks and they're just like us. In a game where you have 92 points scored combined between the two teams that we're talking about someone on the defensive side of the ball. You can tell, man, that we're having fun. This, it might be getting a little ridiculous. The costume, I got the helmet, I got the jersey. Well, five weeks later, it's like it happened three years ago. Ironically, the last home game the Curve played was against the Rubber Ducks as the Rubber Ducks knocked them out of the Eastern League playoffs last year. Punters are people too. People need to remember that. And then this morning on Instagram, which Peter is, you know, ramping back up, <laughs> he decided to say, hey, Raiders, release me. Well, within a couple hours, they released him. That's a very tough question. Um, <laughs> took only about eh, a couple hours in my bracket. Garbage. Police stopped the Steelers star wide receiver this morning and cited him for reckless driving as he was traveling at speeds of more than 100 miles an hour. Welcome back. At six foot four, he might not look like an underdog, but former Penn State defensive end Matt Rice has played that role his entire life, which proved useful during his most difficult times. Sometimes our purpose in life is not clear. You gotta have something to figure out, something to get past the odds that's already against you. Growing up just outside Washington, D.C., Matt Rice had a calling, football. My crew was older than me. I was always the youngest guy, so I had to play tough, rough, and my thing was always making somebody fumble. I was the, the king of it. But football wasn't his only talent. I would draw sketches or uh, different comic book characters. An artist with skills. During that time, not get on a teacher's nerves. You know, and that also would push me to get the work done as soon as I could so I could have that time to draw. Using his love of football, Rice descended upon Happy Valley and quickly made a name for himself. Oh, Rice cleans up on him. Oh, baby. It's a tough day in the office. You want to play big Finding confidence ball? both on the field and in the art room. I could use my, my football skills with my peripheral that I could see what's going on on both ends of the students on the side of me. So I learned from watching other people work on their work, how to clean brushes, how to mix certain things. After graduating from Penn State, Rice bounced around four different NFL teams, including a stint in NFL Europe. But just before his second professional season, everything changed. I woke up to my girlfriend crying as hard as I've ever seen her cry. I'm looking at her, tears pouring down, looking like a werewolf came in and smacked her. And just like, hey, what's, what's wrong? And she's looking at me like, what's wrong with you? Rice had just had an epileptic seizure and an MRI revealed a tumor on the frontal lobe of his brain. That's where artists get their abilities. Fortunately for Rice, the tumor was limited to the surface of the brain, and doctors successfully removed it. Like, this is a miracle that I'm, I'm alive right now. And then Rice decided he didn't need football. It's kind of hard to want to come back with titanium screws in your head. For me to say that to them, they thought I was insane. I'm like, oh, you actually have peace and you're living your purpose. Yeah, but you're playing in the NFL. I'm like, yeah. But it's kind of slowly killing me. Doctors also told Rice the tumor removal allowed his artistic talents to fully develop. I was able to focus on art without picking up a paintbrush with a jammed finger or a busted knuckle. There's just no limit to 
where I can take things and what I can do. And with his newfound creativity, Rice wanted to give back. So he began publishing art prints for nonprofit companies and different charities. That's like living my purpose. That's, that's bigger than me. There's many things I can do that's bigger than me. That's what I'm here for. Sometimes in life, our purpose is not clear. But for Matt Rice, he has no doubts. To be able to be in a position to do more than I can imagine now, that's everything. And as far as the art, I'm just starting with it. You could do five more pieces on Rice. That's how interesting his life is, and he's living it up right now in Germany, as he's told me. He's grinding away on seven or eight pieces of work at a time. Pete? From Beaver Stadium to Kinnick Stadium to the Rose Bowl, Nittany Nation is always present. But in the last quarter century, a new wrinkle in the fan base by these three guys, who once you see them, you just know. <laughs> it's all right. It's good. Game days for John, David, and Paul Duda are different than most. It's kind of become part of who we are. The three brothers grew up just down the street from Penn State. As we got older, we started doing the, you know, parking cars and, <laughs> and taking, you know, taking booze away from college students, Saturday college <laughs> students. And then in 1992, the Duda boys had an idea. Just started wearing the masks that, that we got uh, at a garage sale after the 85 Orange Bowl. And with a 30 cent investment, three characters were born. I'm not ashamed of it, you know, I have an alter ego. Originally designed to be the 12th man, they are now known as the Big Uglies, a phrase coined by legendary sportscaster Keith Jackson. Ah, you guys look like, you look like you're ready to go. Morph the Dudas in the super fan status. I think if anybody does anything, you know, at Penn State or anything else, at a certain point you're going to get recognized. Sometimes it's for something amazing, and sometimes you're just putting on tights and playing around for the weekend. Their identity, for the most part, is a secret. A lot of people don't know that it's, you know, 55-year-old guys behind these masks, and we take them off, and I'm like, whoa. And once inside Beaver Stadium, they're like any other fans, rowdy, but with a tad more enthusiasm. We used to uh, run up the stands a lot more than we do these <laughs> days. But you'll never hear those egos. High five, yeah! Really, it's all about the fans. We're just part of that fan base, which is unbelievable. From Iowa City. To what those guys will look like when they put their Halloween masks on. To Evanston, Illinois. Those are Penn State fans, not Penn State football players. Look like former linebackers. To right here in central Pennsylvania. Do you know where your kids are today? The passion for Penn State persists. <laughs> And the brothers say the toughest part about their costume is the mask. You know, after trying to find replacements all over the internet, after one time they broke, they finally just decided to make a mold of it. Well, all over the United States, senior high school athletes are waiting, begging, pleading for another chance, one more moment to represent their hometown. But for one Altoona baseball player, two years ago, all he wanted was another day. Brendan Coons should be playing baseball right now. It really sucks, honestly. You always look forward to your senior year of baseball. It's just the year that's your year. An arena for him to shine. Baseball was just like my, my place to go. Until it almost wasn't. I shouldn't even been alive. Like I have no idea how it was possible. In March of 2018, Brendan was playing varsity baseball. We were four days away from Virginia going down for our annual trip every year. Coons was on his way to his dad's house after practice. I remember putting my bat bag in the trunk, and that's honestly the last thing I remember. Here for all men out of fire, request to respond for a motor vehicle accident, possible entrapment. I just couldn't really move that well. Everything was blurry. It's probably the worst feeling that a parent can endure. Brendan was in a car accident. His car rolled. Wow, like the car was literally a ball. Like that's what it looked like. It was it looked like a metal ball. Brendan broke three bones in his left arm, fractured his orbital bone, his collarbone, lacerated his spleen and kidney. 
That was the worst time of my life, probably. I was really scared I wasn't ever going to be able to play baseball again. That's what really, like, hit home. But you could say divine intervention helped him. A surgeon came out and actually knew Brendan from Travel Baseball, um, the one trauma surgeon, and he purposely didn't put the, um, the pick line in his um, clavicle because of, he said he knows that's his throwing arm. <laughs> so that was kind of made us chuckle at the time, but um, it, you know, it was very surreal. After missing his entire sophomore season, Brendan finally found the field. When I started playing baseball like I, I knew I could, like. That was honestly the best feeling I could, I had in a, a long time. I was so happy. Like just having that type of moment where you can just know that you're back to where you were. You, you made it. Brendan Coons survived a horrible car accident. His scars tell only part of the story. He always says, Mom, they're so ugly, but it's that's, that's part of who he is now. I mean, he's come so far. Waiting for one more day to shine on the diamond. And whether or not Brendan will play in an Altoona uniform again, he will resume his baseball career next year at Mansfield University. We'll be right back.